everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. You get great news, great interviews, great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Before I bring my guests on, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Or my guest, NDV, Nick DiVergilio, is going to kick your ass. Isn't that right, Nick? Totally. And you said the last name perfectly, man. Oh, that was we, great. Yeah. We had to rehearse this uh, before we went live. Uh, <laughs> Just for a couple uh, seconds. I, I got it right away. Know. Where I am, where I was telling Nick earlier, um, I live in Sault Ste. Marie, which is a uh, high Italian population here. So I do get the Giglios uh, from time to time. So how are you doing, by the way? Fantastic. Hey, man. How are you? I am. Uh, I'm doing pretty good. This is awesome to talk to you. Um, obviously, the primary reason uh, we're talking to you is about Mr. Big and how you're um, in that, um, I'm going to say cup of soup. See how funny this can be? Not cup of soup, but you're in the mix with Mr. Big. We'll get into that. But just give uh, the viewers a bit of a bio. Obviously, you uh, played uh, with Genesis. Uh, you've done some work with Tears for Fears and and uh, that uh, and 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 Spock's beard. But just give the viewers a bit of a quick bio of your history, Nick. Well, you, you said a lot of it right there. Um, I got my sort of break in the business by meeting this guy named Kevin Gilbert back in the mid '90s, who wrote a lot of the music on Shell Crow's first record, Tuesday Night Music Club, and he had made a bunch of his own music. And he was in a band called Toy Matinee. Long story short, meeting that guy gave me my sort of break in the business. And then I met Brian McLeod, who's a drummer. That's how I got the Tears for Fears gig, because he was the drummer previous to me and recommended me through Kevin and this whole thing we were doing. So it was a very much who you know, became friends with these guys. And really, a lot of things changed for me once I met Kevin. So uh, I got the Tears for Fears gig, um, did that for 15 years, which was really cool. Mm -hmm. I, in, in that whole time uh, time frame, I had my own band called Spock's Beard, a progressive rock band out of California. And then, uh, let's see, I did play on the last Genesis record, Calling All Stations, and that all kind of stemmed through Kevin and Tears for Fears and this kind of Eight Ways to Sunday sort of thing. Yeah. And then um, just like a working musician for a lot of, a lot of years, did a bunch of stuff, and uh, thankfully, and then I joined a Cirque du Soleil show called Totem in 2010. Mm -hmm. Did that for about five years. And that was really cool too. It's got to travel all over the, uh, well, all over the U S and Canada and part of Europe with my family, which was pretty bitching. And then, um, uh, that show ended my, my time in the show ended. And then I got a gig at Sweetwater, which is the biggest online music gear retailer in the United States. Mm -hmm. I do content for them and play in our studios. And I joined my band. My current band now is called big, big train. I've had since 2007. Well, I joined in 2007 and I'm going on tour with them immediately after the big Mr. Big tour in Asia, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. And in a nutshell, that's sort of a lot of the stuff I've done. Yeah, I, I got to tour with uh, Steve Hackett at the end of last year, the old Genesis guitar player. Steve Hackett, um, I got to play with him for a couple of weeks just this last November, December, which was awesome as well. Mm -hmm. So I've been blessed to do a, lot of, a bunch of really cool things. Perfect. So leading into the Mr. Big um, news, um, you're the newest touring member of uh, Mr. Big. Big shoes to fill and uh, the late Pat God, Torpy. Yeah. How were you, um, how did you find out that um, they wanted you to um, tour with them uh, this, in Asia uh, starting in July? And, and, what did, and how did you feel knowing that, and this is from my interactions with Eric and that, the much, the... The big thing what, what, of Pat Torpy was his personality, from what I understand, talking to Eric. His drumming was great, obviously. Um, his singing is, you know, second to none, obviously. But the big thing I got from my interactions with Eric a few times was that he was just such a great human being. So I knew that that's where they were going to lead um, when they were talking about having somebody um, tour with them. So how did it make you feel knowing that um, there's probably a lot of your great personality that led them to you? And uh, when did you find out and how? Uh, it, it stemmed through Sweetwater. I've known Paul. Paul was the one guy I knew mostly. I met Pat and I met Billy, gosh, at like at a music trade show back in the day. And I was definitely a fan of the band and listened to a lot of Pat's drumming uh, way before I ever met him in person. Um, but at Sweetwater, we do a lot of recording workshops and we get artists in to come and people pay to come. To, to people pay to come. Sorry, people pay to come to the studio and hang in the studio with the artists that come in. Paul does it quite a bit. He's done, He's been there a bunch. Billy was there not too uh, a while back as well, but Paul's been there a number of times. And I've been able to play as like his rhythm section for these recording workshops. And I also had Paul play on a song on my solo record called Invisible that I put out in, in 2020. Right. 
through all of this stuff, we got to just jamming some more stuff. And I know Paul through Mike Portnoy and Neil Morris and these, you know, a lot of circles of musicians. After the last thing we did at Sweetwater, Paul just sent me an email, said if I asked if I would be interested in going on tour with Mr. Big in Asia. Now, this was last July. So yeah. when he first sent me the email, so, you know, nine, ten months ago or so. Right. And I immediately said yes. I think I said fuck yes. I don't know if you could put that on your <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, absolutely. And all in bold letters, That's you know. Cool. Yeah. And <laughs> and um and then he uh he sent me some songs uh to I don't know that he was demoing out. They were old tunes, but stuff, but working on some stuff. So he sent me this stuff. And so then I went sort of hog wild here in my studio. I'm sitting in my little uh music room, my drums are right there and that kind of stuff. And um I videotaped and multi-tracked my drums. I kind of just went hog wild sending back these demos of me uh, uh, playing and then singing all the parts. So I sang the lead vocal and then I sang Pat's parts too, just to kind of, <laughs> yeah. I'm just doing it for reference, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Sort of thinking I was auditioned. I figured I'd put my best foot forward. Long story mm -hmm. short, I'm, I'm rambling here, but um, sure. they uh, said, yeah, uh, we would love to do it. And you're in, you know, basically, and you know, to make a long story short. So, that's kind of how it all happened, man. It, it, it came out of the blue. Uh, it's not, a, a, I, you've been in this music business for a long time, especially as you get older. The phone doesn't ring as often. I live in Indiana now. I'm not in California and LA where I grew up. So I have a great job, but it's, you know, I'm not in the, in the, where all the action is all the time. So the phone doesn't ring quite like that. Maybe like it used to 10, 20 years ago. So it was super exciting to get that email from Paul. And uh, yeah, I, that's, that's how it all happened. Wow. So, um, I mean, this is going to be one of the questions where people that will message me and say, you ask interesting questions, you know, we like that about your interviews. Well, this isn't one of them. This question is not interesting, but it's gonna, I'm going to ask, is there a song by Mr. Big that you like the most to play on drums? Uh, well, not quite yet because I'm still learning everything. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of really cool things. We're doing the whole Lean Into It record, and there's pro there's a bunch of songs on Lean Into It that are super fun to play drums on. Uh, yeah, really. I mean, all of that, all of their stuff is really powerful. I'll tell you which one is the hardest one that I'm dealing with right now. Perfect. Uh, Colorado Bulldog. Oh wow, yeah. That song is a beast. It's um, it's one of those things where I knew Pat was a great drummer, but he did certain things that I'm not really sure how he came up with the, the technique of playing the part and thank goodness for YouTube where I can kind of steal and just look at, study these videos and figure out what he did. Yeah. Um, it's not so much the main groove of that tune is not so hard to play. It's really fast. There's a whole middle section where he does this stuff with his feet that um, I have, I'm working really hard to get up to tempo because <laughs> it's just a monster. Well, you've got, uh, what are you, May, June, July. You got like three months. So I'm probably oh, yeah. Sure I've been working on it. I was literally, I'm better now, but when I first started, just to play this middle section and, and really to play the whole song because, I mean, a lot of their stuff, man, he was a, back in the heyday, obviously before his, um, he got sick and everything, the dude was in great shape, Pat Torby. Hmm. Yeah, he, he did. He played his healthy. ass off. If you watch those old concerts, which I've watched a ton now, now that I have the gig, you watch them playing in, in – there's lots of YouTube footage of them playing in Asia, full concerts. Dude was rocking. He was cutting in shape. I mean, you, it takes a lot of stamina to do this Mr. Big gig. So um, that's why Colorado Bulldog is a beast. Um, so I was literally about 100 BPM away from the tempo of the record. Wow. <laughs> Which is a really long ways away. So now I'm better. I'm, I'm getting closer and better. Every, and I'm practicing a little bit every day. Just kind of making baby steps um, to play it at that tempo for the whole four minutes of the song. That's the thing. You got to yeah. be able to keep it up for four and a half minutes or whatever it is. And uh, and then play the rest of the show as well. Yeah. And and so you've <laughs> toured extensively. Have you toured? Have you done Budokan? I've not, I've never played Budokan. So this is like a real bucket list thing. And I'm super excited. I, I've been to Japan once, but it was 20 years ago with a band called the Rubenus, Power pop band. I was there for about 10 days. Got to see a bunch of the cities, which was really cool. But it was small clubs, um, mm -hmm. so I've never played the level of gigs that Mr. Big plays, mm -hmm. and and then we're going to go all over Southeast Asia as well. So I've never seen any of these places. I'm, I mean, this is a dream come true, really. Well, they're going to be packed. I think um, I've seen online a bunch of them are already sold out. 
That's killer. I can't so, wait, man. It's really cool. It's, this, I mean, it's like for a player, you know, I've done, I've been able to do a lot of things. I've seen a lot of the world. Don't get me wrong. It's been amazing. I've done some killer things in my life. But um, at this point in my career, to be able to do something like this is going to be just super awesome. Yeah. And then when you guys come back, you're going to be taking a bit of a hiatus and then uh, start the U.S. tour in 2024. And I mentioned to Paul, I said, you got to uh, make sure you do some Canadian dates. And he said he'd love to come to Canada. But I told him, I said, I'm just going to move Toronto close to the border so you guys can just skip over the border and come and play for Canada. Because you're Perfect. familiar with our country for sure. You were in mystery. A Quebec-based band, or you played on their on one of their albums? I played on their records. When I lived in Toronto, I actually recorded that record, my part on the record, in Toronto. I forget the name of the studio, but it was a cool, funky little place that I found because Tor Toronto's just a huge city. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. there's everything there. And I found a really cool little studio to go record in while I was doing my Cirque gig at night. Yeah, you were doing Cirque du Soleil. How many shows did you do across the country? That was over three years, roughly? Almost five years. I did the Cirque show 1,426 26 times. I never missed a gig. And that doesn't include dress rehearsals and rehearsals just in general. Wow. Yeah, so I played that that gig a lot. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Um, who would you say um, influenced you uh, in your style? Uh, well, lots of great drummers for sure. But, I mean, I grew up a big gen – Phil Collins was my idol growing up as a mm -hmm. kid, as a, as a player. I was a huge Genesis fan. And he taught me a lot in my uh, just knowledge. But then I, that's when I was younger and lots of Led Zeppelin, huge John Bonham fan, uh, Bill Bruford. Then I, that was when I was younger. And then I got into a lot of jazz and fusion. I was a big Tony Williams fan and yeah, made my way into funk and R&B. I'm a huge funk and soul and R&B music head. I love that kind of stuff, Motown. So I've had a kind of, kind of a, a wide variety of styles. But as a young kid, it was a lot of Phil Collins and a lot of John Bonham. Awesome. Um, before I let you go, I have a couple quick things here since this is going out. To, uh, well, I have a lot of American subscribers as well, but um, is there a Canadian uh, band or artist besides Mystery that uh, you would say is uh, one of your favorites? I had my definitely had my Rush phase when I was a kid, loved a lot of Rush. Um, uh, you know, there's a lot of cool bands. Um, a Big Wreck, yeah, that's a Canadian band, they're really yeah. great. I got turned on to them a couple of years ago. Very cool stuff. Um, you know. What are you listening to this, these days? A lot of Mr. Big. <laughs> I, yeah, can't, I, yeah, I can't lie, man. I get turned on to some new stuff that I wouldn't normally find because my kids are 22 and 25. So they turn me on a lot of newer material for sure that I wouldn't hear because I'm just so concentrating on learning parts. So you got to really dive in. Mm -hmm. um, so – it's a lot of Mr. Big and a lot of my band, Big Big Train, because literally I'm doing back-to-back -to -back tours. So I have a ton of music I got to get in this brain. <laughs> so I'm not really listening to a bunch of outside stuff, unfortunately, because I'm so concentrating on the other stuff. Awesome. Um, what's the opposite of unsubscribe, uh, Nick? Uh, op subscribe. Opposite of unsubscribe is? Subscribe. Everybody do as NDV do subscribe. says. And subscribe to the channel for sure. Uh, where can people go to? Is that a trick question. Through? You almost got me there. I was I was just about to kind of go, huh? And then, but I figured it out in the end. I, well, sometimes I'll get people thinking, you know, these things. Uh, well, he wouldn't be asking me the obvious, and they'll come up with um, um, not going along with the plan or <laughs> just getting really uh, deep into it. Um, where can people go to uh, check out your big big train uh, uh, music right now? You can go to bigbigtrain.com. You can see everything there, the tour dates, all the new music we have coming out. We have a, a new thing coming out this July, some older music that we've reworked, strings recorded at Abbey Road. It's a really beautiful little compendium with our um, our old lead singer, David Longden. Our previous lead singer, David Longden, passed away in November 2021, unfortunately. Wow. Uh, we, were with, we were together for a really long time, and we've kept going, uh, knowing that he would want us to keep going. So we have a new singer named Alberto Bravin from Italy. Okay, and uh, he's we're touring our biggest tour of Europe ever is going to be with Alberto this summer, and we have our last thing with David is getting released in July of this year. So bigbigtrain.com, and you can uh, always go to my website too, nickdevergilio.com, and see all this stuff that I've played on and my other little bits and bobs that I have going on. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I'll yep. put all the links in the description box for you, Nick. Okay, and uh, I'd like to thank you and thank uh, your um, 
your assistant, uh, Tiffany, for helping set this up. She was really great. And I know you're a busy guy. So all the Mr. Big fans watching this, I uh, really appreciate you taking your time uh, just to put a face to the name and uh, yeah. we look forward to seeing you in Canada. For sure. All right. Take care, Nick. Thanks, man. Thank <laughs> you.